I'm what you call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. Pokemon Diamond and Jade, Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency with which you can find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and such. They're generally fun, even if they are unplayable, which they often are. The mistranslations and poor quality make them unintentionally humorous. I've been able to find most of the ones I've played online, but there's one that I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about five years ago. Here's a picture of the cartridge, in case anyone recognizes it, you know. Unfortunately, when I moved two years ago, I lost the game, so I can't provide you with screen caps. Sorry. The game started with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar intro, a red and blue version. However, the press start screen had been altered. Red was there, but the Pokemon did not cycle through. It also said, black version, under the Pokemon logo. Upon selecting New Game, the game started the Professor Oak speech, and it quickly became evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, you had in addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, another Pokemon. Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1. It had the sprite of the ghost that was encountered in Lavender Town before obtaining the self-scope. It had one attack. Curse. I know that... There is a real move named Curse, but the attack did not exist in Generation 1, so it appears it was hacked in. Defending Pokémon were unable to attack Ghost. It would only say that they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of the defending Pokémon would be heard, but it was distorted. Played at a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear, and the defending Pokémon would be gone. If used in a battle against a trainer, when the Pokeballs representing their Pokemon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. The implication was that the Pokemon died. What's even stranger is that after defeating a trainer and seeing Red receive $200 for winning, the battle commands would appear again. If you select Run, the battle would end as it normally does, but... You could also select Curse. If you did, upon returning to the overworld, the trainer's sprite would be gone. After leaving and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with a tombstone, like the ones at Lavender Town. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against ghost-type Pokémon. It would also fail when used against trainers that we would have to face again, such as your rival, or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against them, however. I figured this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use the previously uncaptured ghosts, and because Curse made the game so easy, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the Elite Four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of ghosts and a couple of very underleveled Pokémon, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, many years later. Then it cut to Lavender Town. An old man was standing, looking at a tombstone. You then realized this man was your character. The man moved at only half of your normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokémon with you, not even Ghost, who, up to this point, had been impossible to remove from your party through depositing in the PC. The overworld was essentially empty there were no people at all. There were still the tombstones of the trainers that you had used curse on, however. You could go pretty much anywhere in the overworld at this point, though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokémon to use HMs. And regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued to play on an infinite loop. After wandering for a while, I found that if you go through Diglett's Cave, one of the cuttable bushes that normally blocks the path on the other side is no longer there allowing you to advance and return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going to the exact tile where you start the game, the screen would cut to black. Then a sprite of a Caterpie appeared. It was replaced by a Weedle, then a Pidgey. I soon realized as the Pokémon progressed from Rattata to Blastoise that these were all the Pokémon I had used Curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, then a bug catcher. 
These were the trainers I'd cursed. Throughout the sequence, the Lavender Town music was playing, but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. By the time your rival appeared on screen, it was little more than a demonic rumble. Another cut to black. A few moments later, the battle screen suddenly appeared. Your trainer sprite was now that of an old man, and the same one who teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghost appeared on the other side, along with the words, Ghost wants to fight. You can't use items. You had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect the ghost, but did chip off a bit of your own HP. When it was the ghost's turn to attack, it would simply say... Dot, dot, dot. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, Ghost would finally use Curse. The screen cut to black, a final time. Regardless of what button you pressed, you were permanently stuck in this black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was turn the Game Boy off. When you played again, New Game was the only option. The game had erased the file. I played through this hack game many, many times, and every time the game ended with this sequence. Several times I didn't use Ghost at all, but he was impossible to remove from the party. In these cases, it did not show any Pokemon or trainers and simply cut to the climactic battle with Ghost. I'm not sure what the motives are behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it was presumably not for monetary gain. It was very well done for a bootleg. It seems he was trying to convey a message. Though... It seems I'm the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure what it was. The inevitability of death? The pointlessness of it all? Perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into a children's game. Regardless, this children's game has made me think. And it's made me cry.